In this video, we're gonna practice what we learned in the last videos by creating a script that's gonna help us to guess the username and the password of a user. And actually, this video is gonna help us to know how fuzzing and enumeration and brute forcing work. Also, you can use this script to brute force for a SQL injection or an extension for a file upload vulnerability and more. So stay with me and enjoy. To show you how that's work, we're gonna use the DVWA login page from the Metasploitable server. So the first thing I'm gonna use the browser as a normal user to submit the username and the password. But I'm gonna intercept the request using burp proxy. So open burp and go to proxy and switch to intercept on. Now let's go to the login page. As you can see, the URL is login.php. So we're gonna make the request to this URL. Now let's submit the real credentials, the username is admin and the password is password. Hit enter, let's go to burp proxy to see how the request look like. So there is a post method to dvwa login.php from the host 10.0.2.254. We don't care about the other headers, but here in the bottom there are our credentials, the username and the password. So let's forward the request. As you can see, we successfully logged in. That's cool. Now let's go to our terminal and create a new Python file. So sub bruteforce.py. All right. We need to import the request module so we can make the post request to the server. So import request and let's create a variable called URL that's contained the URL of the login page. Let's copy it from the browser. Good. Now let's create a variable called rec, which stands for request that is equal to the request module dot post because as we saw before on verb we made a post request and for the instant the post request gonna take the URL as a parameter. That's mean that we're gonna make a post request to the login.php page. If you don't know where is a post method or a get or the basic of an HTTP protocol, go to the last video that I made which is web security uh, HTTP protocol and I promise you that you're gonna understand all of this. Now let's print the rec.txt that's contained the response of the server as an HTML form. All right, let's run our script. As you can see, this is the response of the server. Now we want to send the request from Python to verb to see how the request look like. So we're gonna create a variable called proxy. It's an object that contains the IP address and the port of the verb proxy. If you go to verb suite, go to proxy and options, you're gonna find that the proxy server is listening on port 8080 and the IP address is 127.0.0.1. So we need to send the request that we made using Python to this IP address and this port. Let's go back to code. The burp proxy right now is an HTTP proxy. So we're gonna write HTTP between double quotes to point 127.0.0.1 and port 8080 between double quotes also. So let's go to the post request that we made and let's add a parameter called proxies and assign to it the proxy object that we created before. If you have an HTTPS proxy server, you can add it here, but for the instant, we don't need it. Now let's run our script again. As you can see, the request is sent to verb proxy. So this is a post request as we expected and let's send it to verb repeater so just I can compare it with the request from the browser. Let's go to HTTP history and send the post request that is made it from the browser to repeater also. As you can see now, we have the Python request and the browser request. In the request that we made using Python, there are some headers that are missed, but for the instant, they are not that important and we're gonna prove that. What we need actually are credentials, the username and the password. They are important. So let's copy the credentials from the request that we made using the browser to the request that we made using Python. Let's go to proxy, intercept, and pass the credentials. We need also to change the content length to 44 because it's not zero now. And also copy the content type header. And before forwarding the request, let's go to options and intercept the response. So we can intercept the response in the proxy tab. As you can see, we are in the home page. We are in the index.php page. So that's mean that we are successfully logged in. 
So now let's go back to our code and add the credentials that we need. Let's create a variable called credentials and it's an object again that contains the credentials that we have. The username and the password and also the login parameter. So the username is admin and the password is password and the login is login. Like we saw in Burb. Let's add those credentials to the post request by adding a parameter called data and assign to it the credentials object that we created before. Now let's run our script again. Go to Burb proxy. As you can see, the credentials are added. Let's forward this and go to the terminal and the response is the HTML page of the index.php because we successfully logged in. Now let's change the credentials and run the script again. Before doing that, let's switch to intercept off in Burp. Let's run our script. As you can see, the response is changed. It's the HTML code for the login page. There is an input field for the password and for the username. That means that we are not logged in. And there is also a message here that said login field. So we can test for this message. If we found it on the response, we're gonna print that the username and the password are incorrect and else we print that we are successfully logged in. So let's go back to code. We're gonna use the find method to search for the login field message on the response and this method return minus one if the uh, message is not existed. If it's returning minus one, we're gonna print that we are successfully logged in. But if the login field message exists on uh, the response, the find method gonna return the position of it. So we're gonna type if login field equal equal minus one, print login successfully. Else print credentials are incorrect. Now the credentials that we enter are correct. Let's run our script and see what we're gonna get. As you can see, login successfully. Let's go to our code and change the credentials. Run it again. As you can see, credentials are incorrect. That's cool. Now the only thing that we need is the list of passwords and usernames. So we can brute force. So let's create a list of passwords and usernames. So passwords equal to a list of passwords. And this list gonna contain the correct password. And some random passwords. If you have a word list of passwords, you can use it by just reading the password file. And if you don't know how to work with files in Python, check my Python course. It's the video number six. Now let's create the list of usernames and it's also contain the correct username, which is admin. Now let's delete those lines and start broad forcing. So for name in username, two points, for pass wd in passwords, copy the credentials variable and paste it here. And we're gonna change the username to name and the password to pass wd without changing the login because it's fixed in every request. Let's copy the rec variable also and paste it here. And we're gonna add a conditional statement that we saw before. So if rec.text.find login field equal equal to minus one, print f for calling variables inside the string, the name variable and the password are correct. Else print login field with the name and the password variable. Let's remove those space. So the difference between what we did before and now is those two for loops. Basically, the first four gonna fix the name and test for all the passwords with the second loop. When it's done, it's gonna fix the second username and test with it all the passwords and so on. Let's test our script. That's cool, it's working. And it's returning also the correct username and password. And the other credentials are filled. Now, I want my script to stop testing when it's finding the correct username and password. So let's go back to the script and after it's printing the correct username and password, we're gonna add a break to break the first loop. Let's go and run the script again. As you can see, it's not stopping actually, because we just break the second loop, but the first loop is still working. So to solve that problem, we're gonna create a variable called bool and assign to it false for the first time. And after the first loop, we're gonna test for this variable. 
if not ball to point we're gonna brute force else we're gonna break and we need to change the value of ball to true when we find the correct username and password what does that mean actually the first value of ball is false so if not of ball gonna return true because not of false is true that's mean that we gonna brute force but if we found the correct credentials the value of ball gonna change it to true and not of ball now gonna return false and that's mean jump into the else statement and the else gonna break the first loop let's run our script now as you can see it's working as we expected perfect our video is ended here thank you for your time and if you don't understand something please ask me on the comments i am happy to answer your questions and if i miss something please tell me on the comments also i am still in my learning journey and i hope growth in with you and don't forget to like and subscribe my channel to do more videos like those and see you in the next video